Are you working on a project that needs sanding that's a rounded edge? Carvings on a piece of furniture or like what I have here, I have the rounded edge of the top of this buffet. I got to that part and of course having a hard flat surface trying to go a rounded edge is not going to work. So today on RGTV I'm going to walk through all the options that a Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray will give you to get contoured around that edge, sand it down to the wood so it matches the top and make it really, really easy. So if this is something you're looking forward to, stay tuned today on RGTV. Okay, so first and foremost, what are the options? Before I actually get in close and show you how it works, what are the options you have? So you have your uh, electric ray surf prep, right? And you know, okay, or maybe you don't know. So let me just go through really basic. So you have your pad. Over top of that, you're gonna have a pad saver or an interface pad, right? And one of these two things is gonna go on your pad to make sure this gets taken care of. So you put this on first, and then whatever you're gonna use next, right? So if I was just to use the pad saver and I put this on, that's still gonna give me a flat hard surface, right? So we don't want that. But that's what's cool about the interface pad is this guy is spongy. So what this is gonna allow me to do is have a spongy style surface that's gonna push and contour, but allow me to use whatever grit, whatever sanding sheet or film or whatever that I have in my bag of tricks that I get from Surf Prep on top of this. So you put this on like so, and then you can put this guy on like so. Oh, let me flip that over and do it right. Like that. And then when I'm going over that curved edge, it will curve and contour to that curved edge. Now, obviously, this is a little harder, so it's it's gonna curve so much. So this is a option for what's going to be a, a, just a gentle curved round area. Perfect for this actually, especially knowing I'm gonna wanna rip it down to the wood. A coarser grit is gonna be great, and this is an 80 grit uh, sanding film, and I could just go right down through that. And I'll actually do a close up of me doing it with each one of these options, but I just wanted to show you first. So this is your first option. So you can see as if I was going over a rounded edge, it would be perfect. And it would get it done really quick, really easily, right? So that's a option. So then the next options are your sanding sponges. So they have five mil, 10 mil, and then a half inch. So your coarsest options, is that a word, coarsest? The, the lowest grit for each one of the options is a medium for the five mil, a coarse for the 10 mil and then a medium for the half inch any one of those can work the five mil obviously is the thinner of so you're gonna have less of a you know a give so if you had a slightly rounded edge this could work and then the five mil or the half inch are both gonna be great options for larger curved areas so same concept applies you probably want to go ahead and put your pad saver on first. Oh, let me flip it over, put it on there, right? Pad saver first. So always before you put anything on the pad, you wanna have the pad saver or the interface pad, one of the two. So before I use one of those, I have my pad saver on there. So I'm going with the 10 mil, and I'm just gonna go ahead, stick this guy on here like this. Again, it's, this is the vacuum version, so I'm gonna be able to get rid of all the dust i'm in my garage right now and i sand and there's no dust anywhere it's amazing definitely recommend getting the vacuum version and a really good shop vac in the description down below i'll have a list of what i have and it works amazing so same concept as what you had with interface pad except for now it's an actual sanding sponge so it's going to be spongy all throughout and it's going to have a little bit more give than if you had the straight paper on there, which is a little bit harder. So you, if you have like a carving here and a carving here, you can see how it's gonna be able to hit both of those at the same time and not have too much pressure on any cornered areas, which is great. 
And then you can again go up one more. And I'll have to hold this. I can pull this guy off and leave a pad saver out in there for myself, like so. Okay. And then we have the half inch, and this is medium. So this is the as coarse as it goes for the half inch, but still is a viable option when you're trying to scuff, possibly sand down to the wood. I think the coarse would be a better option, but if you were just scuffing, so if I'm scuffing prior to priming and painting, this would be a great option around those areas. So I just can slap this guy on here like that. And again, it's gonna have a lot of give. Nice and soft. If I had multiple areas of you know, carvings or curvature, I would be able to curve right around there. And you see how well it curves around my finger? Maybe not. Well, you're gonna see it up close here in a second anyway. Um, so it's not gonna be too much pressure on one point or another. It's gonna be equal pressure in and around, which then will have it sand evenly. I guess that's the coolest point about the sponges where it's a little softer. Whereas if you use the interface pad with a hard surface, you can see how me pushing on this is gonna curve it in a, uh, a longer curve. So you'd wanna have a longer curved area. That way the pressure is equal all throughout. So, but again, I'm gonna get up close, do a voiceover with that so you don't have to hear all the noise and show you exactly how I'm doing it on just this edge with each one of the options. So you can really see up close what it's doing. Okay, so I am gonna save you guys from having to hear this. <laughs> so I'm gonna go voice over here in a second, but I do have the interface pad and an 80 grit sanding film. And that's what we're gonna do right now. And I'm gonna show you, it has a little bit more tension, a little bit more where it's not gonna like I wouldn't be able to hit two curved areas with this option really well because you can see how it's going to curve around this because it's a larger rounded area. But how hard the films are, how stiff these are, this wouldn't be an ideal option for all curved areas, especially areas that have multiple carving curves in it. And I actually have something down below I might show you to give you an idea what I'm talking about. But this is an option for curved areas, the interface pad and any one of the grit. And then we'll move on to the sanding sponges. But I'm going to turn you off so you don't have to listen to all this noise. Alright, so first things first, I got my pad saver on there. Okay, and obviously that would be no good because of that flat hard surface, right? So we're gonna go with a sanding sponge. Now we have three different kinds. Again, like I said, five mil, 10 mil, and half inch. The five mil is pretty thin. So not probably not ideal for this kind of rounded area. If it was a little like hump or something, probably as thick as the five mil, this would be an option. You can see I've been doing a lot of playing and testing and beating these things up pretty good. Um, so here we go. Thank you. 
All right, so you may notice how much further into that little recessed area I was able to get with a sponge because just like I was saying earlier, there's just more give to the sponge. So that's the give and take, right? So if I was to use the interface pad and a sanding sheet or film, as you see here, it didn't quite get down into it because it's a little bit harder. It's not mushing into that little crack or crevice, right? But the sponges, another advantage of using them is it did, it got right down in there and you can see it did not cut that corner off. I was pushing into that corner and it was curving around the corner, but not cutting the corner away, which is, I mean, absolutely amazing, right? And then it sanded it down. It's obviously not sanding it down as well as an 80 grit because this is not an 80 grit. This is a medium. So it's like the next step up from what an 80 grit would be. It's probably like 120. I'm trying to remember the, the cheat sheet. So, but I'm gonna peel this guy off, right? All right, here we go. Leave the pad saver on and we're gonna go to the 10 mil and the 10 mil actually does have a course. So this will be closer to that 80 grit. So we're gonna go on to that, move on down and show you how that one looks. All right, and you can see up here where I'm not getting as much is really just because I beat this thing up so bad. I probably need a new coarse one, but I just wanted to at least use it and show you guys that it's thicker, has this more sponge to it, so you can really mush in and around that edge. I mean, you see how much that's mushing in and around? And if this was a brand new sanding sponge, it would have ripped through that pretty good because this is a coarse. I just, that was the one I've used the most when I was testing and playing. So it's probably the dullest of them, but for demonstration purposes, you can see how much that's curving in and around and how much it would mush right into that corner right there and get in there if, I mean, if it was actually like as good as the medium one was. So now we're gonna move on to the half inch and the half inch is a medium as well. So it's gonna be a little less powerful than this guy is. Pull this off, make sure my, inner, my pad saber is not covering the holes so I get my vacuuming action. And this is a brand new one, so this one should work a whole lot better, but it is a medium, okay? And that's gonna be the, the, the lowest grit you have for a half inch. Just slap that on there, all right. And there you go, you can kind of see like a brand new pad, even at a medium, did better than the beat up course one did. You can see right there. And you can see how much that sponge and the, the half inch really got in there. I mean, you can see that, look at that. You know how much of a pain in the butt that would be to do by hand? Trust me, I've had to do a few like that. And you can turn it this way if you want to. You can turn it, put it up here if you want to. 
That's what's good about the half inch and probably the 10 mil if I had a good one. And anyway, is it has so much give. And then if you have multiple shots, so like what's going on is it's curving over the curve, curving into the edge and then around and not cutting off this corner. Cause I did it over top of that pretty hard and that corner is still there. It's still pretty good. I mean, that's pretty amazing, right? So newer pad even did better than the course one at the 10 mil. So the, you know, definitely want to keep up on your pads, make sure the course one I've used a lot in all the practicing and testing I've done. So you can see it's kind of beat up. This is the course one that I was just using. So yeah, probably need a new one of those, but this is the half inch. Amazing. I mean, really when you need something that's going to need to get around, look at that. I mean, it's getting around almost the whole thing all by itself. I probably would use this on this and just go all the way down, all the way through, even at a medium, got right through that finish. No problem. So those are your options that you have. You'll have the interface pad that we had here with any one of the sheets or films that you want to use. You will have the five mil, 10 mil, and then the half inch. All right, and there you have it. So sometimes having this cool cheat sheet is amazing to kind of reference, but it's also kind of fun to have a whole video to look at, to see, to watch somebody actually use the product and how it does what it does. So that's why I want to do this video. One of the biggest things that I thought was really cool about having my new electric ray is that it does conform and contour around those rounded edges. And that's one of the biggest things that people keep asking me, like, does it really do that? Well, how does it do that? So I thought this video would be good to show you the, all the options. There's not one option, there's multiple options depending on your situation. So it's really cool. Uh, the way it turned out, I got the piece right here. I'll probably add a little video or something right here just to kind of show you the end result and how my surf prep sanding system got me there. So if this video is something you enjoyed, was helpful, please hit the subscribe, hit the like. And if you're looking for a surf prep sanding system, of course, don't forget to use my links in the video description down below and my discount code for 10% off. And of course, if you want more video content like this about the surf prep, please leave a comment in the, in the video description down below, just so I know what other information you'd like to know. I'm having a lot of fun with this thing, and I even have a new toy in-house that I'm gonna continue to share and compare against each of the two different kinds of surf prep sanding systems for you guys. So please be sure to hit that subscribe button. I hope everybody has a blessed day. As always, happy painting.